So we now moving on to our last topic, which is on active citizenship. There is nothing new to learn here. In your active citizenship module, it's on paper one. The whole thing is worth 40 marks. The first 16 marks are on general protesting, general campaigning, general being an active citizen. The last 24 marks are on your action. This video deals with the first bit on active citizenship. So the basics are your key British values and whenever you're in an exam throw in as many British values as you can. Individual liberty because people who are protesting are following their um, thoughts, their wishes, they are being an individual and protesting and democracy is, is the basis of why we're allowed to protest. Okay, some key terms. These are taken from the um, AQA subject specific vocabulary that I handed you out at the start of the year. And these are the words that come up that are associated with this topic. They are in your booklet. If you can learn them, then you'll be able to answer most one and two mark questions. So make sure you're reading them, you are learning them, you are copying, um, you know, cover and copying them. See if you can work out what they're Okay, so what is active citizenship then? Active citizenship is being part of society, getting involved, could be your local community, it could be national, it could be international. Um, it's all across the world if you want it to be. It could be like a local community clean up. So I know at Phoenix Park near me in Blakenall, they do a local clean up. There used to be a Sedgley clean up. It could be anything like that. Or it could be as big as actually doing this education, teaching you about your democratic values. Um, it is somebody taking time out of their life to do something that benefits their society. It could be voting. You guys can't vote, but you could join a pressure group. You could sign a petition. You could share a post about something political. We know people who um, have been active citizens. We've got Greta Thunberg and her campaign for the environment. Marcus Rashford and his campaign for free school meals for kids. It could be voluntary work. Being an active citizen is literally what it sounds, not sitting back and letting the world pass you by, but getting up and doing something. So ways you can be an active citizen then and the impact they can have. If you vote, you change who governs the country. Therefore, that depends on things like the economy, on taxes, on laws, all the big things, the big structures of our society depend on your vote. Volunteering, you could go and help someone less fortunate. People who volunteer in Sedgley cleanups, people who volunteer in charity shops, people who volunteer at homeless soup kitchens, people making a difference to those people who need it. You could become a magistrate. So we know that magistrates are three people in a magistrate's court, which is for lower order criminal activities. So not your big crimes, they go up to Crown Court, but magistrates will hear the vast amount of criminal cases. You don't have to be trained um, to, to like a, a, um, a degree level to do it. Most people who volunteer are between ages 18 and 65. You will receive 21 hours of training. You do have legal advisors with you, but it's about being part of that legal process. You decide whether that person is innocent or guilty and on their sanction. So you are being an active part of the criminal justice process. It shows our democracy. In a non-democratic country, everyday people could not decide things like that so it's a huge part of our democracy and it's you being an active citizen you can also sign petitions we know that if a petition gets 10,000 signatures then you'll get a reply from government if a petition gets a hundred thousand signatures it's usually debated in Parliament so this can actually change um, laws have new policy created so signing petitions particularly with all the the stuff we've got with e-media and how easy it is can make a huge difference the other thing you can do is join a political party even though you can't vote yet you could join your local political party as a youth member even when you're older and you can vote you can do things like hand out leaflets um, help with promotions before elections you can discuss things with your uh, political representatives you can even have a say in um, who becomes their leader 
um, and so on. So you've actually got a big voice by joining a political party. So what I want you to do now, have a go at filling this in. Press pause and have a go. OK, so contacting your MP. The reason why this is good, your MP is your direct line to government. So I email my MP all the time. I even text him. I've got his number. I'm part of my uh, local Labour Party and my MP is the local Labour representative. The good thing about this, if I've got a concern about the way the country's being run, I email my MP, he goes to the person in government about it, he gives them my, um, my concerns and I get a reply from him. That's brilliant. He is my direct line to the way this country is run. The limitations are with it though, my MP hasn't just got me to worry about, he's got 70,000 constituents, he can't possibly do that for every single one of us. And also he's been elected in by those people, he's got to represent everybody, not just my voice. So when I campaign to him to vote no in one of the parliamentary elections and he votes yes, it's not just me he's got to represent. There was actually an eight mark question on this. So be sure for every method you're able to argue backwards and forwards on these methods. With the petition, they're good because you can get quite a few signatures. The limitations with paper petitions, you can't get that many. With an e-petition, however, if you get 100,000 signatures, which is quite easy, then um, that will be debated in Parliament and you could learn lead to laws being changed, such as saving the woodland and so on. The limitations are though, it's kind of become too popular. There are too many e-petitions. I launched one myself over lockdown, didn't get that many signatures and realised there's already thousands exactly the same. So actually they're kind of like doing each other out of business, if you know what I mean, because there's too many of the same thing. The other thing is, they don't have to be debated in Parliament. Remember, we've got that uncodified constitution. So, yeah, they might be debated, but they also might not. Standing for election yourself, that's brilliant because you could be the one changing the policy. You could be the one in Parliament discussing ideas, getting things sorted. That's truly democratic. And the fact we live in a democracy means that you're not born into those positions of power and you can get there by being elected in. The limitations are you pretty much have to put your life on hold, so you mostly have to give up your job. And then what if you don't get elected? What if you don't stay elected? There's huge problems with it. Direct action, think of Fathers for Justice and so on. The benefits are mass media attention. So you're always going to raise the profile of your cause. The limitations are, though, there could actually be... Um, violent, they could be illegal and you could end up getting arrested and actually doing your protest more harm than good. Okay, so factors that influence the success of a campaign. Funding is the first one if you've got money. If you've got money in your campaign, you can pay for advertising, you can pay to go on protests with everyone wearing the t-shirts, having the big banners, um, you know, you can really pay for that merchandise that really helps sell your campaign. The other thing that you can do is that you can hire people to work full time on your campaign. So it's not just people protesting on the spare five minutes in the evening. It's people working full time to support your protest. The nature of the cause. This basically means are people going to care? So fox hunting, you show pictures of little foxes looking all cute. Of course, people are going to care. Jamie Oliver and his school dinners, it's about children, of course people are going to care. When it comes to uni fees, people aren't really massive fans of uni students, they think they should go and get a job, so they're not as bothered. The next one, celebrity endorsement. Jamie Oliver is the best one to use for this, he's campaigned for school dinners because he was massive at the time, loads of TV shows, loads of book deals. He launched this campaign and because everybody loved him, it got done. Marcus Rashford, a Premier League footballer, he launches his campaign on free school meals, raises the profile, you get people signing petitions who would never have dreamed of signing one before. It's a massive success. And then your methods used, why would this help? Fathers for Justice might have been successful to start with because they got so much media retention. But then things turned a little bit bad. Remember, they got accused of plotting to kidnap the Prime Minister's son. So it depends. You can put people off. 
um, anonymous and their million mask march if you remember there was quite a lot of well the media showed quite a lot of antisocial behavior there people get turned off by it. okay so let's have a look at these protests and see why they were successful or not local campaign to save the seven stars pub in Sedgley that was successful because it got the MP involved it got huge support with a petition it also is a pub and people like their alcohol so nature of the cause celeb well politician endorsement and people liked it national campaigns gay marriage millions well not millions lots and lots of protests big protest marches so direct action without being violent is the key celebrity endorsements from people like serena mckellen so huge um, publicity there changing feelings towards it as well people became more accepting so we're willing to accept it the plastic bag campaign and rebecca hoskins if you remember she started off with her local village asking them to stop using plastic bags for a few weeks the media got hold of it the nature of the cause was about animals and the environment so people started to care it became publicized and it became nationwide and then Jamie Oliver and his healthy school meals. You've got Nature of the Causes children, celebrity endorsement, money to fund it, it's successful. Unsuccessful then, saving Cosley School. People don't tend to like teenagers. People don't tend to like teenagers who are coming from a school that's not that popular and is kind of costing the, the local council a lot of money. It didn't get saved student fees people don't tend to like uni students so they thought just go and get a job and pay for it fathers for justice started using quite extreme methods people didn't like stop the war people just didn't care it wasn't a cause they were bothered about so you can see why some cases are successful and aren't there are some other campaigns if you press pause you can go and research these and use these in all four of the modules as case studies okay there is an exam on pages six to eight in your booklet have a go at answering that now.